In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use Affinity Designer on the iPad. Get out your iPads. We're gonna talk about the left-hand sidebar. This is gonna be part one of a, I don't know, four-part series probably. There's lots to learn about on the iPad and Affinity Designer, so let's go. Thanks for joining me on this video. My name is Juna with Detour Shirts. Today we're gonna to talk about the iPad, more specifically the Affinity Designer on the iPad. I've done tutorials for Affinity Designer on the desktop. This time I'm gonna do it for the iPad. There's several differences on the iPad. I'm gonna try my screen record on the iPad so you won't see my uh, pen tool. You're just gonna see some touch things on there, but hopefully it gives you a better experience and it records better. I'm gonna use this microphone up here as well. So hopefully this is a better setup We'll see um, in this video, I'm just gonna touch on the left-hand sidebar. There's lots of tools right there. So I'm gonna show you some of the things are the same in Affinity Designer Desktop and there's some that are a little bit different on the iPad. So let's get into Affinity Designer on the iPad right now. All right, so here I am on my iPad. I just opened up Affinity Designer by clicking on the app. And this is what you'll see first of all, if you don't have anything, this is brand new. I'm gonna click on the plus sign here and do a new document. We wanna change this to pixels here first and then change this to 4,500 by 5,400. That's the Merch by Amazon size and make sure this is 300 DPI. There we go. And that's what we want, transparent background, RGB. I'm gonna do uh, CMYK, you know, I love CMYK. And there we go. So we hit okay. And there's our board right there. So we're gonna learn about these down here on the left, starting with the top. But before I use that move tool, I'm gonna have to put a rectangle in here just so we can start with the move tool. The move tool is the first one on the top and these on the bottom, these um, these tools on the bottom relate to the move tool. We're gonna use some of them, not all of them, but I'll show you what some of them do. And you can see there's, there's a bunch you can use um, back and forth arrows there. All right, so the move tool is what it says it does. It's just there to help you move the object. So it can be any object or line or whatever. If you click on it, you can move it. The next one is the node tool, which we also have in the desktop version. Um, this is gonna help you move specific points. Now, because this is not a curve, I can't pick on the points with the node tool. I'm gonna to have to change it. So I'm gonna go up here and change it to convert to curves, just like I do in an Affinity Designer desktop. And then now with the node tool, each of these I can move, right? Because now they're specific points. So that's what you can do with the node tool. You can move it around and things like that. All right, the next one is point transform tool. That little thing right here in the middle, this is where you can move your design around. So that move that we did last time, let's go back to move. Usually if you click here, it moves around the center, you see right there. But if we select this right here, move around that point, that point that we just made, now when we move it, it moves around that point. That's all. So we just, that's the point of transform, the transformation point tool, which is handy if you wanna move it in a different direction and not around the center. You can move these tools as well as move, you know, lines and things around that center if you have a group of them. So by default, it's not on though. So the next thing that we have is this tool right here. It is the contour tool. Uh, recently added and that can do um, expand or contract your points. So if you have, if you wanna make an outline that's bigger or inline, you can do that. So let's say, let's make it a little bigger like that. You can do that, see? Um, to undo, you just have to hit your uh, iPad with two fingers and it will undo. So I just hit it twice. That so I can show you the next tool, which is this one, the corner tool. So you can see I picked a corner there, and now with the corner tool, I can make uh, some of these things like a rounded corner. I have these things down here, concave, straight, cut out, and none. 
and you can change the radius and um, things. Baking the corners means that it's set. So let's say you want it, that's the way you want it. You bake it and now it's set, right? So I can undo that with two fingers. Um, the next thing right here is the pencil tool. So just like a pencil, you can draw the line and it will do a vector line like that. Um, my width of my line is really small, so let me do that. We're we'll talk about these tools later, but that's uh, your stroke right there and your fill and your colors, all that. So we'll talk about that another time, but that's your pencil tool. Uh, and this is a vector, so you can come in here with your node tool and, you know, move these things. There you go. All right, the next thing is this tool right here is the vector brush tool. And you can use different brushes. Lots of cool brushes here. So you can see all these brushes. Like, they, there's some cool ones on here. So if you just use the different brush um, or made it fatter, you got, you got some really cool brushes. And if you made it bigger... Look at that, some really cool brushes, right? I'm gonna delete those. All right, um, and close that. The next tool is the pen tool, just like we have in the desktop version. Click and drag. You know, you still have the same kind of Bezier curves that you do with it, so that's the pen tool. You can draw some really cool stuff with that. This one is the grading or fill tool. So let's say we have this right here. So let's click that and do the fill tool. See, so it's kind of like that gradient. So if you pick that color here and then move this color to blue, you can see it goes from blue to yellow or whatever we want. So that's the fill tool. Good for gradients. Um, you can see solid, linear, elliptical gradients and all of that. So the next thing is this transparency tool, which you can see it goes from blue to transparent there, just like it says, but you can use this opacity as well. So I, I rarely use that one. So the next tool after that is the crop tool, vector crop tool, and you can see it just crops things. It just makes those lines like I did with the tutorial for um, Canva same thing kind of thing here it kind of just crops it you know at a straight line so um i think you can do it with yeah so you can do it with uh, lines and points and things like that it just crops it up right it's it's really there but it's not showing so that's what the crop tool does it kind of hides it masks it quick mask uh the next thing is the shape or rectangle tool right we can do that and change kind of the colors here if we want or no color right there to see more shapes just click on that um, triangle tool right there and you can see all the shapes uh, same shapes on the desktop as well rectangle ellipse square stars triangle tier trapezoid cog cloud diamond crescent arrow star heart pie Call out ellipse, call out rectangle, donuts, and polygon. So lots of cool shapes on here. Same. Uh, I'm going to have to do some quick tips on these. So the, the cog and the ellipse, and the, the, they can make a lot of cool things with just these shapes. You can make a lot of cool things. So we're not going to do all the shapes today. The next thing here is the artistic text tool or just text tool. Um, and you can start typing in here, which is really nice if you could just click here you get a little keyboard you can start doing you know games uh, and then drag this to make it bigger so you can see and then hide it so this is just your your text tool if you click on this as well the little triangle here you'll notice frame text tool which I don't use and then the color picker tool which honestly I just use the color picker from up here as well but if you need a specific color Click on that and then you'll see that it added it to the color right here. So as I, I pick the color, it's gonna add it to the top right here so we can use it. So the three on the bottom left, the X, the magnet, and the trash can. The X is deselect. So if you had something selected with the move tool, if you click the X, it deselects it, really cool. And the magnet is snapping. So, you know, things will snap like to the grid. You can see some of those snapping features. If you turn that off, um, it wouldn't have some of those snapping features 
that we just saw. And delete is just like it says, if you hit the trash can, there it goes. It deletes whatever was selected. So delete, and so on. So that's the left-hand side. There's so much on Affinity Designer iPad, but I think we'll stop right there for part one. We'll learn about the right-hand side and maybe some of these contextual tools later on, the ones on the bottom, you know, how they change on the bottom here when I when I change for different things, those contextual tools, we might have to learn about that. There's a ton of things to, to learn about still, but I think we did a good job for part one, learning kind of the basic tools on the left-hand side. So that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this video was super helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if it's better to shoot this way where we're just recording the screen and not showing the pen, or if you'd rather see me shoot from on top and kind of see my pointing with the pen tool. Uh, I, can, I can do it either way. I thought I'd try and do it this way just to see how this works. Let me know which is better. If this video was really helpful for you, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps in the algorithm. And if you're not subscribed to this channel already, make sure to hit that subscribe button right there. The question of the day for this video is, are there any other iPad apps that you use? Let me know that in the comments. I would love to do more video tutorials on that. I use Procreate is another one that I use on the iPad. So uh, if you guys use that and want to learn more about that, leave that in the comments. Thanks again for watching this video. And if you wanna see more videos to help you on your print on demand journey, make sure to click on these videos right here. Keep creating and keep learning. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.